Okay, so welcome back everyone to the first episode of The Traveler, an ultimate frisbee experience from one field to the other. This is your host Ernesto and we're gonna start the first episode on how to huck well. The forehand and tips and things that I found that works for my development as a player and as a thrower. So I just thought about just covering uh, in the first episode um, on how to huck how to do the forehand flick hug. So firstly, um, I didn't actually know how to throw effectively until about the beginning of summer around May. So that's weird, right? After throwing for about five years-ish. Uh, I was actually doing fine in non-win situations like zero win or like minimal to like zero win. Managed to scrape through throwing in Malaysia. And even, and even then, like I was, whenever there was like big gusts of wind, for a moment I wouldn't be able to throw a huck and it wasn't until I came here the Midwest in Ohio where the weather is like terrible and stuff that I realized that I could not consistently throw a flick huck when there were days when when there was never actually any days without wind so over here like at every practice there would be some sort of wind either crosswind or like wind against me and I wouldn't be able to throw consistent hucks and I was just throwing like 50-50 uh, hucks that were like really hanging up in the air for a really long time and, and the receivers and cutters were just having to jump and it's not, it's not good. Basically it wasn't good hucks. And I didn't really, I wasn't able to actually find like helpful videos on actual technique and form and it, it was pretty disappointing but uh, until I tried out and studied players who actually threw very well in America at least, like Jimmy Mickle, Johnny Bansfield, Harper Garvey. So this kind of video is to cover a lot about technique and form and kind of similar stuff that what I found that were similar uh, from these players that I mentioned and even many more because this is the basic form and technique. And I thought that I would like to share them with you guys just because the resources out there are great. But for me, I felt that um, there wasn't an actual inform like drawing and stuff actually identifying which angle is the best and where to throw it uh, where the release points and stuff so we'll go through it uh, in this uh, video episode one of the traveler so firstly a few things to bear in mind just two things that this is what I found to help myself um, just because there is not an actual detailed explanation online I wish someone had done that, but let me be the first or one of the first to help explain the process to you guys. It's pretty simple, but you need to take a lot of practice on it. And uh, this is applicable to any category you're playing, uh, but to give the audience some context, I'm mainly practicing for both men's and mixed categories. So you have to take into consideration the angles, the speed, the timing of your huck, and stuff like that. So bear that in mind. So right now we're just going to dive straight into the video analysis. I'm just going to be comparing how I threw a year ago and pretty much all the way until I learned how to effectively throw in the beginning of summer, So, which is funny. And then I'm going to just walk through a technique and proper walkthrough of the form and then just give you guys some takeaways. So I'm just going to end this PowerPoint slide and go to the video that I started. So this was when I started throwing some time ago. So, so as you can see, let me just put down the volume. As you can see, the throw was like really flared up. I was traveling a lot. Look at that, look at that leg, oh. And just no proper form, I was just throwing. And the thing about it is like, which I'll cover more, is that I threw above, above the knee. Oh, wait, hang on. Uh, yeah see so my angle right here is always above the knee it's like toward my waist which makes the throw so floaty and high up here that it has to wait and hang in the air before coming down so it was not the proper technique so that's basically how I threw a year ago and pretty much kinda I was ranging from the waist to about almost the knee about this level but that was basically how I threw all the way up till the summer um, and then after the summer, which everyone would be looking forward to, um, this is me a couple of days ago, 
and then we'll, we'll just begin to walk through. So I'm just going to play through the video one time and then I'll just walk through it, the techniques and stuff. There you go. So basically, first important form is the angle of the disc. So as you can see, I come out. Oh wait, I need to up my pause. I need to up my pausing thing, man. Uh, wait, where was it? Okay. Okay, so the angle of the disc is always facing up. Okay. Oh, wait, let me try to draw. Oops, wait, hold on. Hang on a second. Eh, there we go. Um, the angle of the disc is IO, obviously. So facing that way, uh, you wouldn't want to make it too flat or OI outside in, you would call it, just because you're throwing in a wind. So bear in mind, I'm actually throwing in a wind too. So yeah, uh, this is the first thing. And then just let me change the colors. Second thing, notice at the disc, you always want to throw below the knee. So I was actually bending a lot over almost in a lunge position. My release my release point was below the knee. So keep in mind when you when you throw your hucks or practice, try to throw below the knee. And then second part is just yeah you can see my legs no longer traveling, haha. And then uh third point to remember, let me just change the color, is your shoulder. So always drop your shoulder in in let's see about 45 ish degrees facing the ground so you're always coming up swinging this part of your body from backwards to forwards this shoulder from backwards to forwards if I can repeat the video again look from this part from from the pull back to the front I'm swinging my whole body forward which explains another thing. I always lean into the throw, so you need to lean into the throw. Af this is the wind up, and this is after throwing. Basically, the follow through. So, basically, the follow through, you can see my body goes from below here to up here with my whole body rotating from back to front. Um, I apologize for not getting another angle on the disc, but that is what we can we have to work on today. I'll probably, uh, if anyone has no more questions about it, I'll be happy to answer them. Just put them in the comments below. Um, so yeah, and then last part is the flight of the disc. Look at the flight of the disc. It ends up, it's here. So the disc is here. It ends up sort of like near towards my shoulder-ish. And that is where you want it to go because, because oh, and that is where you want it to go just because you don't want it to hang too high up in the air. So if you saw just now, about a year ago, and pretty much how I've been throwing, this always ends up at the head, around my head. So that's where you do not want this to be. If you're throwing like a fast pace, you want a nice, uh, perfect, either a flat hut or a fading, uh, a fading breakside throw. You want to throw always here so that you have the chance for a cutter to run onto it instead of doing those 50-50 jump balls again. So this just helps. This is what I've found uh, particularly helpful in terms of uh, throwing. And yeah, it's, it's, it's something that I've discovered along the way. Uh, people say that my forms kind of incorporated of a lot of players kind of form, but I prefer to just do it, whatever works for me. So the pullback, the swing, and also the angle of the disc. Oh, another thing, one more thing to cover is the line of sight. So if my line of sight is here, I'll just act like this is the middle of the field. If you're in the middle, oh, this is the middle, basically. You always want to throw your disc somewhere away from that line of sight. Okay, You do not want to throw it near the line just because the disc will start to fade really badly to the brake side. You do not want that. You want the disc to kind of float up 
and then slowly fade almost to the middle or a little bit to the break side oh my drawing excuse my drawing so yeah and then one more thing is the snap and release you all your wrist has to come back to for the snap and release so you see this wrist uh, i know you can't really see it here but your wrist has to snap forward and follow through halfway so half follow through you don't have to bring your arm all across your body like this you kind of have you, it's it's kind of fine to just like uh, i'm playing with colors Oof. kind of fine to bring your arm almost to what your middle part and then just come back here but your wrists the most important thing is your wrist you have to snap it forward if not the disc will stay io forever so it's just gonna straight travel all the way here without turning to the without curving back so the curve actually comes from that power of that snap so snaps important for it to follow through because you're always throwing away from your line of sight right so follow through throw it away and then this will slowly ooh, what is happening this will slowly fade here so it works um, so yeah that's basically what I mainly uh, have in terms of throwing uh, I'm just gonna switch back to the PowerPoint just to uh, clear up some things to make you guys even uh, to understand even more so basically we went through a video analysis um, yeah so basically takeaways you have to lean forward into the throw always lean forward don't lean back I mean you can have that catapult effect where you like lean forward throw and then reverse a little bit just because of like that cock back of the gun where you fire it and then the gun jerks back so it's the same thing you fire, you lean into it, you fire, but you, there's still space to lean backwards. But the main thing is to lean forward in your throw and then just stuff out far enough to get away from your mark and getting a wider area for that arm rotation. So the further away you get from the mark, the more space you have for a pullback and then snapping forward. And then you have to get it quick too, because if you pull back slow, mark's going to cover it. And then always remember the throw below your, the, the knee, uh, as I've pointed out in that drawing. And then angle this, the disc away from your line of sight. So basically, yeah. So what I said, line of sight in the middle, you kind of want to throw away from that middle line, if you get what I mean. You can just just re rewind that video and just see where. Uh, just, 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 just look back at the video after this, um, uh, after this section. Uh, and then always remember, IO against winds. I was throwing it in fairly, fairly strong against winds. Uh, how would you say? Uh, yeah, I was just throwing against the wind so in that video itself So I had to do an IO angle and then if you're going with the wind you probably have to do an OI Same 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 thing away from the line of sight, but you snap it when you snap it you have to snap it OI So it's basically outside in just curve your arm a little bit forward uh, And then another thing is to drop your shoulders into an almost 45 degree angle towards the ground a lot of people throw it level with the shoulders straight and just flicking your whole body up that that's where the angle of the disc is so important because if, if, if you don't drop your shoulders you will not be able to throw below the knee instead you'll be just throwing around the race and then it's just gonna float high up and stuff well I mean that's what works for me I'm not sure about you guys but that's what I found helpful to me and I've been throwing above the waist so that's pretty helpful to keep in mind and then always snap your wrist, wrist inwards and half follow through the end. You don't have to follow all the way through just because you don't want to hit your mark or like have some weird form after throwing. So a half follow is fine and always snap your wrist inward like I mentioned. If not, the tendency to stick to an IO angle is greater. So if you throw, so, so, so if you follow everything but you realize that your throws aren't fading back to the middle or the brick side, uh, you always have to pay attention to your wrist sometimes even though if you snap your wrist you're not snapping it hard enough so you probably have to do some training which I will uh, cover some of the training ideas that you can have for the arms core and stuff that follows and then again ensure the height of the disc is not too high middle ground will be somewhere below the head around the shoulders you know if I mean if you're taking a back shot of your video you'll see if you're going up too high again you don't want a 50 50 disc so yeah uh, basically yeah so training for throwing uh, basically that's what I uh, covered uh, what I've been working on over the summer uh, I apologize there's not I don't have resources already available to you but comment down below if you need stuff like that for me to show you again but basically it's core focus training lunges to get used to the low angle release like you see that big lunge that step away from the mark 
you have to get used to the lunges and low angle and then basically chest back and shoulder strength training so that's the gym stuff if you don't have the gym you know the uh COVID and social distancing it's fine to find free weight days uh find a partner at least to throw with unless you're like me you're alone and then you just throw it alone like get a couple of discs go to a big field and then just start throwing uh, my tip for me this is when you're free you don't have to follow it but that's what i recommend personally i sometimes do it sometimes i don't during the school year but do at least a 10 minute throwing routine every day or just throw it the, the the disc if, if you can't throw just like hold the disc and just do some shadow stuff i know it's weird but yeah it, it works if you can find the time so at least a 10 minute throwing routine every day just to keep that touch over there and then at least you can work on your throws every day uh believe me 10 minutes is a lot uh if, if you do it every day and you'll see the results because that's what i focused over summer and it, it has been really helpful um if you want to make it more challenging you know ask your friend to put a mark on so that it simulates closer to a game you know not every you know not not every throw is going to be a wide open easy hug throw you know and then again like point number four it says add in fakes and movements pre-cutting before getting this and throwing so in the real game you won't be able to like stand still have an open cutter ready have an open mark you know the mark's not doing anything an open throw no you're gonna have a mark that flashes occasionally you're gonna have to adjust to the cutter so adding in more people fakes and movements it's just helpful for your throwing uh training but that is after you've master the basic technique and throwing so any last thoughts uh, it's just this is basically what works for me again i can't stress it enough uh, if, if if you're throwing fine in the wind good for you uh, th uh, this is what i see the need to help other ultimate players because the uh, because the resources available i decided to make a more detailed lesson uh, i hope that it's enough uh, if you have any questions again let me know in the comments down below any questions about uh, this uh, the, 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 the throwing forehand hook techniques and again yeah I'm still improving my throws I'm still messing up so a ton of mistakes uh, but that's the beauty of ultimate ultimate uh, you can work on yourself you can uh, do strength training you can keep on throwing and just keep on improving so I guess that's the beauty of sports even uh, and then if you like the video uh, like and subscribe and comment down below what you would like for me to cover next uh i'm kind of i'm gonna like guess that it's gonna be like a backhand sort of thing but uh, again uh, it's up to you guys comment down below if not i will just go on with what i have for now uh yeah so that is all what i that is all i have for you today uh thank you so much for watching this video i hope this is, has been helpful again like and subscribe if you find this channel helpful i'm just gonna try to create and like put out great 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 <laughs> just put out ultimate content for you guys if you find it helpful uh yeah so that's all i have uh this is ernest toe the host for the traveler and ultimate experience from one field to the other so i'll see you guys thanks for watching